movement. She is constantly elevating her skills and studying new technologies. Gazelle has several NFTs and also paints live where she connects with people and other community members. And with that, Giancarlo and I are honored to welcome Gazelle to the stage. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> nice to have you here, Gazelle. Thank you so much for joining us as the guest today. Um, and the way we like to kick it off is maybe uh, take yeah. like five minutes. Thank you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> hey. Yes, I just uh, thank you so much. Sorry for that. I just tried to coordinate between all the devices. Um, so uh, first of all, I appreciate Jennifer and you, Jen Crow, because invited me and thanks for having me. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here today and uh, this opportunity to talk about myself and yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer, for pretty much very good <laughs> introduce me. But so I'm um, just if I want to introduce myself, I'm going to start by, uh, yeah, I'm Gazelle Dasty and I, I'm originally from Iran. Uh, we moved to Turkey a few years ago and then I moved last year to America and I'm pursuing my second master in digital art here right now. Uh, I am I'm coming with a background of electronic engineer and I have a master of technology management as well uh, so I started is it is it okay I have to start to talk about how I started art or yeah no no that's yeah that's exactly <laughs> yeah, I just was curious yeah just kick it off like giving us a little more information about your your story your background how you you sure. got into art and then maybe later you can tell us how you then also got into the web 3 space so yeah go ahead sure Sure. Um, actually, I started working with my background in, in engineering field at first, but by, by that time I found myself like, okay, um, because I've been a climber and um, most of the time I've been in nature, like camping and adver adventure stuff. So I always had my iPad with myself. So only th tool that I had to create something was the iPad. And by the time I, was, I had a channel on Telegram that was a music channel. And uh, so I always took a picture from myself and I started the drawing on them uh, and use it as the like poster of my channel or like the profile picture of the channel of the music that I had like seven years ago, eight years ago. And so that got continued by like okay there are just so many pictures that i have that looks like art like digital art and uh, by the one of my friends advice i opened up the instagram and just put all of them over there and that was the beginning of my digital art journey um to okay the gazelle art happened um, before that, uh, actually, I started to play with the computer since I've been three years old. So I'm always been like crazy impressed by computer and technology. And I still feel like, OK, <laughs> it's the most interesting thing in the world for me. Um, but my father still have the painting that I've done when I've been three years old by the paint. And I don't know, by that time in them in that old computer so that I'm sorry uh, so yeah uh, digital art kind of happened to me when I was really young <laughs> but and uh, I continue with the video game so I've been video gamer like kind of professional call of duty player wow really and, <laughs> wow, that's awesome yeah <laughs> I, I mean, love Call I of Duty too. I haven't it. played it in a, in a long time, but yeah, okay. I love I love all the the first person shooter yeah. games too. So that's that was uh, one of my oh, favorite yeah. faves. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I yeah. played Counter Strike back in the day. I don't know if you guys remember that. I don't remember that one. Yeah, uh, Counter Strike. I mean, Jennifer, I I started like very professional gaming by myself by Starcraft, and then I shifted to Warcraft. And then uh, I completely shifted to first person game like um, Counter and Battlefield and Call of Duty. So, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I've been always front of computer. That was <laughs> the point that I just 
<laughs> mention all of that history of gaming of myself. Um, yeah, so we, uh, digital art continued by my selfies that I took about myself, like the different kind of selfies and then painting on them and made them as a digital art. And, and that was like just for myself until that, until I started working with one music label in London. Uh, um, I, I made like logo and like album cover and all of that stuff with them. Uh, my friend who worked uh, in that uh, team, one day called me and said, so do you know anything about NFT? And I said, no, what's that NFT? I said, it's a like digital asset store. You have to check that out. It, uh, all the arts over there pretty much looks like you. And I said, okay, okay. And the day that he called me, I joined and for first time I joined to the uh, clubhouse. And I found like a Persian uh, club over there. And I just joined. I didn't know what's the clubhouse even. In one day, everything, he called me as an NFT. And I said, so how can I figure it out? And he said, join a clubhouse. People all the time call, talking about it. And I said, I don't have clubhouse. So he invited me to clubhouse. And I joined to the one club in clubhouse that they wanted to uh give like invitation for foundation by that time foundation need needed like invitation to join and you shared your art over there sorry thank you <laughs> thank you so much um oh yeah sorry i'm sorry for that and i got the invitation for foundation uh that's it boom i said <laughs> okay all right, what should I do? I have to meet, meet and list my art over there. And I did it and like took less than a week that I sold my first NFT on foundation. Uh, after like after sold out my collection called Mental Disorder uh, on foundation, I I started to working on OpenSea as well. That uh, I have a collection called uh, um, Symmetry of Enlightenment. Uh, on foundation, which is collection of all my like digital journey, I can tell in in that way because it's it's the art from 2000 and yeah 2018 up to 2022, uh, all of them is there kind of. <laughs> I no. don't know help. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome, and and uh, so cool that like you both got introduced yeah. to like NFT space, you found that Persian clubhouse, and then you were able to <laughs> yeah. just, you got accepted to foundation back then, and you were able to oh, yeah. you know, start selling your artwork there, which is which is so cool. Right. And um, what, what I was curious about too was the, you know, I, I've noticed you have a lot of different, you know, types of, um, of styles, right? And different things when, when you look across your collection and some of your other art, and I was curious, like what inspires you to create, you know, some of the artwork you have and what do you think has influenced like all these different styles that you've developed over the years? Oh, actually my mood and the music that I'm, <laughs> that I'm listening in that moment can lead me to different, different ways. But, but no, if I want, you know, to analyze it very serious. So by that time that I um, I created the, the collection of my self-portrait, which is like pretty dark artwork, and I'm aware of it. And by that time, I've been in Iran. And so I grew up in Tehran and but, uh, you know, I guess recently we heard about what's going on about the women in Iran and how it's difficult to be just as a woman and live as a woman in, in that country by all that restriction and all the limits that always stop you to do whatever you want. Uh, I'm not talking specific about hijab or any politics or stuff. I'm talking about that I loved motorcycle and 
I, my father, I mean, against of all the rules because having a motorcycle, even bicycle, is illegal for women in Iran. So my father bought me when I've been 14 years old, the, my first motorcycle, but because the so many stuff, which is the long story, I couldn't, I couldn't like have it for more than a few months and I, I we sold it. Now, so many stuff, video gaming, that was the video game group stuff that people gathered over there, that, that, that was all the gamers gathered there and play video game perfectly fun everything and i wasn't allowed to go because i've been a girl so many stuff was over there that stopped me and i remember some of my art uh, i i still remember them that the night that the like dollar inflation happened to the US dollar in my country from like five to 13 or something, that was a shock. And like everything got so expensive in one night. And I made one of them, which is like so meaningful to me and still is in galleries and still like Jewish people love them. And it's because they are very meaningful art, but Behind that was so much pressure and so much stress <laughs> for me. Um, and when I moved to Turkey, so um, because um, I'm always, uh, I started to reading philosophy book. Sorry, I have a little bit ADHD. If I'm jumping between some it's concepts, okay, it's all good. you just you just, <laughs> you just it's all good. stop me. <laughs> you no just worries. control me like no, don't jump over. There. But it's it's really related to something when I want to say. It's all about mm -hmm. me. And um, so I started reading philosophy books when I've been really young, in teenage age, because my father um, was like fan of the Nietzsche and <laughs> so many <laughs> philosophers by that time. And after that, so, so philosophy changed everything on me. I came from the religious country you know and the Nietzsche kind of like ruined everything on the background that I grew up with and uh, so after that uh, after the philosophy I found out like, oh it's too much what should I do and I just kind of for helping myself I started to reading psychology this is where the uh, mental disorder collections come from. Because I read like so many books in one year, uh, just from psychology and, and to figure that out, like who am I and who's the people around me? Uh, we, I've been so curious about to analyze everything. I don't know, this is why I'm an engineer maybe. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just wanted then I, I wanted to be able if I date with someone, <laughs> be able to analyze him like in different ways and just figure everything out <laughs> about myself and about the people. So this is why I um, I created mental health disorder because because by that time I two times I went to uh, Isola if I for now, said, well, it's the like mental issues hospital. Isola. That's right. I don't know. Yeah. It's correct. Yeah. Sorry if it's the pronunciation is not correct. Um, yeah, I went over there to to meet actuals and like the the person who has uh, schizophrenia. <laughs> I, I've been this much curious to see, okay, how they look like, how they talk. And um, uh, so I made the mental disorder collection and it got sold out on foundation, like very successful and I'm so happy about it. Wow. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, this is how uh, the different kind of arts happening. But but I, I moved to America for pursuing my master in digital art and I started as a game designer because I always had this dream to be in game industry. I don't know, life is mysterious. Life is so weird sometimes because showing you this is 
okay, you dream about it, but you love something else maybe. And um, yeah, I started as a game designer. I, I started working with Maya Unity, um, shifted to VR at the end of the um, first semester here. And I found myself to nagging and complaining to my chair committee that I want to be projector. I want to start to do projection mapping. And I really appreciate this school and all my professors here. I love them because they supported me like, woo, so much. And uh, they prepared everything that I wanted to do whatever I want here. So they, they prepared all the equipment for me. I did the projection mapping. The big projection mapping that I've made here was the, Holly, um, the Halloween uh, with the audience and all of that stuff. And I, after that, I had like two, three kind of projection mapping in my my studio. Um, I made like few projects in, uh, in VR. I create this game scene in VR, and uh, for the summer here as a um, as a um, advertisement, no, a marketing development, uh, digital marketing development. I I made the AR project for the school as a job. Yeah, and I now it's a two months I shifted to touch designer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I found touch designer like, oh, my love, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we'll see. And it's absolutely beautiful what you've been able to do with touch designer. Oh, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's like limitless ability. You yeah. can do anything you want. <laughs> that's, that's very good. I mean, come part of the touch designer, which is so attractive to me that I found and like most of the people out there in the touch designer field, they all all come from engineering field. They all like software engineer, computer engineer. And I found that one of the big touch designer person is electronic engineer. So I just went, okay, I'm in a good way. I'm in the correct path. I'm happy. I, I would agree because you get to combine the two things, right, that you love so much, art and technology through that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted I wanted to combine my background with art. That was my biggest dream. I'm so happy yeah. for you. I have a question. When you sure. become, you were oh, yeah. in Persian calligraphy. Right. And I always wanted to ask you what the message means, what the words mean. Can you share that with us? Sure. Actually, <laughs> actually this is my original handwriting uh, that I'm just making as an art, like make it as a calligraphy. The actual Persian calligraphy looks a little bit kind of like Arabic calligraphy and a little bit different. But for your question, these are just the code, Jennifer. I'm just trying to write some code. They are like repeating the words like love, art, God, world, art, again, and love, um, what about it? Like, prosperity, some codes that makes me happy when I repeat them again and again, because I'm really re pretty much creative on the affirmation manifestation <laughs> by, by repeating and all of that, that stuff. So these are just the code and I call them love code. I love that so much. Thank you. I love that. I love that you're basically doing that by affirming those words repeatedly. But also, I was thinking about how the code is similar to technology. And exactly. That, yeah. <laughs> so perfect. I love it so much. Exactly. Um, so yes. now I know because I was like, what does it say? And oh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm asking people, like, if I want to give them, like, Jennifer, what you want me to write for you? You can choose three words or your name or anything. So I'm able to write your name or anything uh, you want, uh, basically. But if I want to start by myself as a recon, 
I'm just repeating, repeating my codes. <laughs> uh, you have um, a collection, The Infinite Eyes. You describe that as the intersection of mass and nature, of law and of grace. Can you share with us why you chose the title Infinite Eyes? Sure. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning that. This collection, you know, um, kind of feel like I never can come back to 2D digital painting like before. And I just look at this collection like, okay, this is my last creation of the like version of myself that was just only 2D digital painter. Started by my self-portrait, um, continued by symmetry of enlightenment and open sea, and I guess <laughs> uh, here by the infinite eyes that I did, that I never talk about this collection before. I never promoted. I never shared all that pieces on my social media. Even kind of feel like hmm, I don't know. I just want to be over there um, for someone maybe who really loved them and love the background of it. But this is the mixed media, Jennifer, the mixed media digital painting. Uh, I, I created the, uh, what you call that? Like the psychedelic, say psychedelic pattern, like the, what you call that? Shape, geometric shape. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Sacred. Um, oh my God. I, I wrote about it so many, so many, so many times. Uh, yeah, that geometry pattern, um, like maze. I don't know. Help! Is there yeah, anyone? I get so we can the top, and um, oh, thank you. I see the uh, the um, referring to and how the oh is, god, uh, it starts as like a, a spiral and and goes. Oh, out. a spiral. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I just forget the name. I guess it's in a, on a hashtags event. If you be able to see the hashtags, I'm looking for help. Um, and um, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate. Yeah, yeah, I create. By the way, I create the what you can see as eyes, um, different in a different way by coding, um, and then put it and uh, procreate, mirror it sometimes. Sometimes I didn't mirror it and didn't make it as a symmetry, but just capture the image of that uh, generative art that I made when I, when I could Im imagine, oh, it looks like a face to me, and then took it to the procreate and I start painting on it uh, and make it as an actual like portrait or face, this is why they looks like a portrait. But this is the mixed media between generative art and digital painting. This is why I feel like, okay, that was me and a way to shift in completely to the like 3D and immersive real time um, art. Um, yeah, this is the infinite eyes. I kind of feel like, um, Eyes is the most meaningful thing in the world as a human being. And it's very important for me. Since I started digital painting six years ago, I always emphasized on the eyes. I always try to eyes be there as a part of my art. And now in infinite eyes, so I, I changed the eyes to degenerative coding art. I don't know by my by my feeling to technology computer. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so unique. Thank uh, you. I was looking at each one of them. The crimson one stands out immensely. All of them, really, and like you said, some of them are not symmetrical. Some no. of them are perfectly symmetrical, but the feel behind that that you were able to capture is quite remarkable. So, uh, thank you. Congratulations. Uh, you have that other, uh, let's see, 
So in regards to this one, there's nine pieces. Uh, I was wondering if you could maybe go through it one by one because we have it pinned up to the face and we have it down the So maybe you could go one by one and tell us the titles and a little bit about it. Sure, sure. Okay, so I think okay. that first one on the top left, Do you, are you able to see that one? If not, I could pull it up. So that one is, uh, you titled it Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy. Yeah, yeah. I can see, I, can, I cannot see which one you pull it up, but. That's okay, I'll go one by one and then maybe you could just tell us a little bit about it. How about sure. that? Okay, so sure. Poison Ivy, what was, um, what was your thought behind that? Um, actually, Jennifer, I have to check which one you're talking about. <laughs> Here, I'll because, send, because I'll I don't remember the, by the specific name. Yeah, I got you. Hold on one second. I can talk about my yeah. mental disorder uh, collection like hours and hours, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, let's go. This um, this collection actually showcased on Art Be Art Miami Be Basel last year uh, in three places. Uh, actually, two three pieces of that. Um, Web three Denver, uh, Future Shape Denver as well. Bitcoin Miami, and. Uh, I don't remember more than that. But yeah, showcase like so many places, like cool places as a web tree, uh, art galleries, and Fibonacci. Fibonacci, Jennifer. I remember <laughs> Fibonacci. <laughs> I'm old. It's okay. No, I <laughs> so yeah, I just would encourage everybody in the audience to check out the guys because it really is a Thank you. collection. And like you said, it was beautiful in so many places. Um, you can take your time with it. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's a it's a last collection that I ever made in 2D digital painting, kind of. Cool. And Jacob, did you want to go to first? Yeah, yeah, sure. And actually, I did see that we had somebody um, on the stage. I was wondering, because uh, I know you had a request a little bit earlier, Arjun, um, did you want to uh, ask us a question real quick before I go to my next question? Yes, I have lots and lots of questions for the first time <laughs> attending space. I'm following Gazelle for a very long time on uh, Instagram, and we, we have talked on and off in the DMs. So yes, I was just noting down whatever she had the link, uh, what, what all questions I can ask her. So thanks, uh, Jan and Jennifer for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak. Super amazing. I think I'm, yes, it's for the first time I'm, I'm attending a space which is being hosted on X platform. Okay, so my question is, my first question to Gazelle is, uh, uh, yeah, I really like your work. And uh, you mentioned about projection mapping. Uh, using projection mapping in your work and very actively going through that in your uh, at your place of study. Can you share the uh, work in a pinned tweet? I'd like to take a look because I've been uh, pondering for a long time to learn projection mapping and uh, motion tracking. All the projection mapping is your particular domain. So I would like to take a look at that work. Is it possible? Oh, sure. Hello. First of all, hello. And uh, thank you so much for your positive energy. Uh, actually, it's on my Instagram, pretty much everything. Okay. But I have it on Twitter. Just give me like a moment. I have to scroll my media down to find the projection mapping videos like uh, for like few months ago. But yeah, I, I started projection mapping by myself and I learned it by myself because this is stuff that I'm doing, it's out of curriculum of school. School, as I appreciate them, they just prepared 
their equipment for me. Even touch designer, there is nobody here, even though I can ask one question about it. So projection mapping was pretty much the same. And um, I worked with Heavy M and Grand VJ. I don't know that you know that, the R Chaos Grand VJ, Mad Mapper, and the project that I'm using is Panasonic 7000. Kind of brag. But, and actually, just yeah. real quick for maybe others that, including myself, that I'm not really familiar with projection mapping. What exactly is projection mapping? <laughs> projection mapping means, uh, my friend, I cannot find it. It's just down there on my media and my tool there, and you can find it on my Instagram very easy. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. Um, can I uh, talk about projection mapping? Meanwhile, if Gaz I mean, sure, yeah, Gaz yeah, it will be easy yeah. for Gazelle yeah, to search yeah, yeah, through yeah, her yeah, work so yeah. I can explain what is what yeah. exactly is projection mapping. Cool, go for so, it. So yeah, what projection, is projection yeah. mapping. We okay, so I think Gazelle, you want to speak? Sorry. What, what, what I, 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 will, I took a, I took a spot because you were uh, you were busy searching for your projection mapping so that you can find it easier for I mean uh, take your time to search through the projection mapping work and I can explain the, what is projection mapping so I just asked and okay. taking your permission so oh, okay I don't know the host is Jennifer and Jane. yeah no it's fine it's fine uh, keep <laughs> keep looking Gazelle and then uh, Anjan if you want to share uh, sorry Arjun if you want to share yeah. what it is yeah appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So projection mapping is, uh, let's say, if you have your artwork and you have a three D surface of a wall, okay, and uh, the wall is like vertical and the floor is horizontal, and uh, let's say you want your art to bend through, I mean, the wall and the floor is real life. You're standing in your bedroom, and let's say there are some nooks and corners in your walls and you want your art to bend along those surfaces in real time, right? So you are pro projecting real time visuals and they are bending along the surfaces. Similarly, if you have seen uh, works uh, projected on the buildings, and I'm sure you must have seen that uh, a huge building and it, it appears as if the building is folding and morphing and it's all a work of light and shadows. I think you must have seen those things. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, oh. yeah so I that is it. that is exactly what is called projection mapping, where you, like, as the word suggests, projection, and you map it. So mapping is something you map a moving video on a large surface. It can be a building, it can be a tower, it can be Burj Khalifa, it can be Eiffel Tower, it can be anything. You basically map your art to the surface of the uh, building and all the nooks and crevices it all gets taken care of so what gazelle was mentioning i think heavy m uh yeah i i've just, I just only heard of the name i've never done projection mapping myself it's on my things to learn list or i have a long list of things to learn and to keep on removing stuff because i know uh, that i'm <laughs> my life is short i have to cut down my things to learn list so heavy map heavy m she mentioned and mad mapper they are two very prominent software which are being used in projection mapping. Touch Designer, as she also mentioned, uh, these three software are being used in projection mapping. I only know yeah. this. I don't know the process, how to do it, although I really want to learn and yeah, keep a look on Gazelle's work. She's really doing uh, doing some really fascinating works in Touch Designer. She is, I mean, the recent post of her Instagram is on uh, Touch Designer. She keeps on posting her work in progress, how she's struggling, how she's making, how she's connecting all the wires inside touch designer so yes yeah, really <laughs> fascinating because it's been touch, i've been really fascinated with touch designer it's been on my list things to learn list since like two years but i have not done anything with touch designer so yes sir. and uh, really found the how she talked about uh, yeah, friedrich nietzsche and studying philosophy studying about uh, mental health but i did not i because i was also going through a very dark phase in my own uh, uh, I mean, having a very dark period. So I started reading philosophy and all of ancient philosophy, stoic philosophy, and started understanding the meaning. Okay, how do people work? How do how do how do we think? What do, what is good? What is bad? What is happening in the society? What is human nature? It helps in definitely understanding uh, your own pain points, wh how you are feeling, whether you're sad and upset, why you're feeling sad and upset. So that's a great way to actually deal with the modern chaotic life and when you read philosophy you realize that 
throughout many years, throughout centuries, people have mostly remained the same and they are, uh, I mean, we are same kind of uh, flawed people, flawed human beings and philosophy is like a great way to figure out what what exactly is going in our heads. And it really blows your mind because things written centuries ago, uh, millennia ago, it's still they still hold true today in today's context. And you still, it blows your mind. Okay, so you realize, okay, mm-hmm. human nature has not evolved throughout the century. We are still the same people, mm-hmm. uh, but we are living in car. We are living in huge buildings. We have cars. We have all these things. But at fundamental, at a core mm-hmm. level, human nature has remained the same for so many period of time. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Uh, really fascinating to know. And, and I saw that she actually posted one photograph of Friedrich Nietzsche's book. I think how many books you have on Nietzsche? I like four or five books you have? <laughs> I mean, I had a library in wow. Tehran. And I had a small library in Ankara in Turkey. Here, it's just like two, nice. two and a small books. Thank you so much yeah. for uh, all the information about projection mapping. Um, yeah, what um, I went ahead and posted the, uh, I took a screenshot. I wasn't able to capture the video itself. I, d- I already pinned it, huh? Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. She got it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I already pinned like one of them and talk. Thank awesome. you. Well, yeah, thank, thank, you, so thank you so much, Arjun. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for uh, enlightening us with your explanation of projection mapping and um, right. something I, I wasn't really familiar with. So appreciate getting uh, getting that lesson and, and fully agree with what you say too, you know, that, um, at the core, right, us people, human beings, we really still are, you know, we're still wired the same, right? We're maybe put into different environments and conditions, right? But that's why a lot of these old texts and things that have stood the test of times are still very, you know, very relevant um, today. So no, I appreciate you you coming up and um, asking a question and also enlightening us with some of that, that information as well. So much, much appreciated. And uh, Gazelle, I guess maybe uh, segueing into my, my next question actually, because, and I know you touched a little bit on this before, but um, I am also like very drawn to your like audiovisual, you know, artwork, right? And and I know in your Twitter you mentioned that you started creating it a couple of months ago with a you know, visual designer, and and I really love how mesmerizing it is, and and how it combines, you know, music with visuals that have you know geometric shapes and colors and all this movement. Um, and I was curious that if you could share a little bit more about like the process that you go through. Uh, to create those pieces, and I know there was actually something that uh, I, I, I'm going to put it up here on the on the live stream, and I'll try to see if I can pin it up as well. But there was a recent post that you put of yourself, like going to a board and then the computer and back and forth. And I'm like, <laughs> what is she doing there? You know, so I uh, would love to learn a little bit more about, like, yeah, how, how does the process work for like creating one of these art pieces where you have the both that like you know music element and and movement and geometry and all that. I, w- I would love to learn a little bit more about it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I never been this much excited for anything. I guess um, this software make me crazy. Um, I forgot to eat. I, I'm, I'm always forgetting to like stand up. I lose my appetite. I, I'm I just lose my mind when I'm sitting and learn from That's it. It's awesome. It's it's perfect. It's something that I wanted, I guess, and I love it so much. Why? As you said, the audiovisual that I'm focusing right now, because when I've been 17, when I for school for first to go, I wanted to educate sound engineering. That wasn't, that was like, I wasn't alone. And that, that was, we, we didn't have that option in Iran for the girl. And, um, but that was one of my father, like, oh, I want you to, you know, educate sound engineering because I, I always fascinated about synthesizers. I have to mention that my father is electronic engineer as well. And electronic music was something that I grew up with. Jean Michel Jean was my my father' favorite artist. By the 30 years ago that I've been just like two, three years old, I grew up with the the gramophone desk and all of that stuff from the Queen, Pink Floyd, and Jean Michel Jean, best music in the world, and. 
so I'm always been obsessed with the electronic music and I love synthesizer. Wait, is it just me or? Oh, I lost. Her. I lost her audio. Yeah. Because uh, we can't hear. We can't you. hear you. Oh no. Uh, some yeah. there we go okay you're back sorry yeah we couldn't hear you for a, for a little bit it, like cut out but I'm now we hear you now i'm so oh, oh i'm i see that my mom called i'm sorry for that uh, i didn't see my phone my phone is there yeah uh until until where you um you heard about i don't know i call off where but yeah I'm, i was uh, i was talking about the music and i grew up with a really good music um I've always been obsessed with synthesizers, with how they work, the oscillator, the sound waves, all of that stuff. But I never had this opportunity to actually work as a sound designer or something which is related to sound and music. So I found Touch Designer, which is like, make you able to connect, combine the visual and audio together as an art. It's really engineering process. It's very fascinating process because it's so logical and so tough. There is no gra graphic elements over there. It just looks like it's node-based software. So you don't you you don't see any graphic ele elements or anything which is like looks nice at beginning. You have to actually create everything like a physics formula, like a mathematic formula. And it's perfect. You have to program and build the network with, which it can uh, read the signals, the audio signal, the sound waves, and make them as a RGB pixels. And then you can see the visual by them. Or they connect the pixels to the sound waves in the reverse. Which is, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a fascinating process for me because it's something that I always wanted, everything at once. I'm not putting my engineering degrees in a drawer and just close it and forget it. I use everything all together. And yeah, so school, school of art here, kind of... Um, I, I want to talk about it, but uh, after, um, I don't know, answer your question perfectly first. Um, did I? Yeah, no, that no, I, 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 yeah, and, and I love to hear your passion about it. I mean, it, it, it is so, oh, yeah. so cool. <laughs> so, and, and I'm curious, like, how did you, because, um, so, like, were you able to get any guidance from anybody, like, to learn how to use this particular tool? No. Or you just kind of went yeah. into it or looked up information online and, and, and got into yeah. it? Or, yeah. No, I, yeah. when I, that's <laughs> Nothing, how I take zero. it. So, zero. 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 Awesome. Independent gizmo in this way because wow. uh, la last semester I taught Bart Budistra. I want to say his name here to save here as my chair committee. He's my supervisor professor in the school here for my master. I love him. He's the best. And um, I told Bart, like Bart, after after I finished my uh, project, share mapping project, and I found myself, oh, oh, because they, when when I finished my project and I called Bart, like come come to my studio, I did it. It's it's here. Come see it. And he said, you know, you you're not supposed to finish it in 20 days. We plan that you will be busy with it at least six months at least two semesters, not in one less than one month. What, sh what should I do with you rest of the semester? <laughs> because um, I kind of ruined all the plans about, um, be I I've been so fast to learning the projection mapping. After that, by the search so much, I found Touch Designer. And I went to the board, my professor and said, board. I want to learn touch design. He said, oh, co oh, come on. Every day you come in, you want to learn something else? <laughs> oh, but no, no, focus on your stuff. Is all focus on. I said, I'm focusing. You want me to be like a best projection mapper artist? 
buy me a computer that I will be able to work touch designer and buy touch designer, please. And he said, so it's expensive. Leave me alone. And I said, no, I want it. And I, we had so much discussion. And as always, he supported me. And that was took, took like seven months that they buy the computer that actual can work with the real time immersive 3D stuff. And, um, but the um, touch designer software, because it should go through the ITS here, so many policies and all of that stuff that we stuck through it. But yeah, so they prepared everything and I started to open up the YouTube. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to learn by designer. And I started to learn by myself. I write everything down. Uh, actually, I bought a big whiteboard for my studio. So I'm writing everything down to not getting lost. Like, okay, where I come from? Oh, after this, I have to connect to this. And touch designer makes you feel like, oh, finally, I see how computer actual work. It seems like you're not designing, you do some really cool, like, engineering computer stuff because you will learn um, how everything actually works. In Maya, so I made, the, like, the long two-minute animation uh, last semester here. That was, like, very, very good one. I'm not bragging. That was, that was teamwork, but I made it, like, individually. And so all my professor was so happy about it but didn't satisfy me i said okay that's it it's maya and they said yes and i said okay i'm going i'm going all right i'm going somewhere else and in maya you just click on the bottom sphere is over there but in touch designer you have to tell computer what's the sphere actually <laughs> and what kind of sphere you want and how if you want to like make the fluid you have to first create the dot and then scratch them down and then make that make them like a physics formula to make the actual fluid uh, result. Yeah, it's um, it's different. Wow, wow that's so cool. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It, it was bringing me back memories of having like the um, the graphing calculators and how you could like create like different functions to make all these like cool geometric like shapes and things like that. Exactly. That here it's all like in a three dimensional kind of space and you can integrate music right. and I mean that's it's it's so cool. I love I love like just just like looking at it. I mean it's really really mesmerizing to me. So I love it. Thank you. I'm I'm at the beginning. Um behind the beginning even. I just started I'm the newborn student in in this field. <laughs> but but I love it. I, I keep going. I guess. Well, I think with the, the combination of like how fast you learn, the passion and motivation you have, you know, I think, yeah, it seems, I mean, even though you're just starting, it seems like you're already producing some really cool stuff. So I cannot wait to Thank see you. everything you'll, you'll continue to create, um, you know, over time. So love it. I have a big dream because I want to work with corn one day. <laughs> The rock and corn. Yes, that was my teenage idol yep. band, and my last name is Dusty. So funny, let me tell that. Uh -huh. My last name is Dusty. The vocal, the vocal of the corn is Jonathan Davis. <laughs> I I had a Yahoo Messenger by Gazelle Davis. That much I was a fan when I've been like 13, 14, 15 by that time. I still metal hit person, okay. Um, a lesson in Gojira these days, but but it's one of my biggest dreams to work with Korn one day and work with all the metal music bands that I've never been able to go to their concert because I've been Persian and I've been in Iran. And I've been metal music lover and I never could go to one of them concert because of that. So now I'm in America and I kind of feel like I'm gonna make something to bring me in back a stage with, with each of them. And, you know, it's, I don't know, maybe life's gonna change. As always, I'm going to be like, work with the agency. I don't know what, about what's going on. But this is something that I always dream about it and love it. When I'm thinking about it, I just feel like, oh, 
I love it. I hope, <laughs> I hope that that happens. I uh, am a big fan also of that era of music, like oh, cool, death new cool. metal, right?
I can't hear. Oh, there we go. There we go. Great job. How inspiring. Bye.